Hey everyone, uh, sorry for the delay, um, but I finally got around to doing it, so here's the video you've all been waiting for. Um, so this video will just be Q&A's most commonly asked questions, um, and I'll try to get through as much of them as I can in the video. Um, but yeah, so let's get started. Alright, so the first question is, are you Ethiopian? I am actually not Ethiopian nor am I half Ethiopian. A lot of people in the comments of my TikToks are asking if I'm half Ethiopian, um, but I actually am not. This next person asked me, what's your background? So um, I'm actually full Filipino, Filipino-Canadian. I was born here in Canada and uh, my parents are both Filipino. So there's a little bit about myself. How old are you and are you <laughs> How old are you and are you single? Um, so I'm 19 years old. I was born in year 2003. Um, <laughs> I am I, I am saying <laughs> Okay, next <laughs> Next question. Are you in school? If so, what are you studying? So yeah, I am in school right now. Uh, I go to Bombardier School of Aerospace and Aviation, uh, and I'm studying aircraft maintenance. Um, basically, I just, um, if a plane needs fixing or whenever they land, I just go down, do ma regular maintenance checks, servicing, and if there's a problem, I'd fix it. So that's what I'm studying right now. Do you speak Amharic? So I don't speak Amharic. Um, I've been trying to learn how to speak, at least like, couple sentences. I could only, I could only speak words. Um, as of now, uh, I do look forward in the future learning how to speak Amharic, like at least, you know, general convo, like easy convo, but as of now, I only know like simple words, simple greetings, and that's about it. I can't really hold a conversation. If someone were to speak to me in Amharic, I would not understand at all. I would just blank out. You would, I would be quiet. All right, so the next question, are you a deacon? If so, where do you serve? So, uh, yeah, I am a deacon. I've been serving since 2018, I think. I am not good with my dates at all. Let me just figure it out. A few moments later. Yeah, so I've been serving since uh, May of 2018. I currently serve at uh, St. Mary's Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Cathedral here in Toronto, Canada. So it's like right there, right? Um, that's what it looks like. And uh, a lot of been a lot of people have been asking if the church that I go to is in Ethiopia. Um, I currently live here in Canada, so um, I haven't been to Ethiopia. All right. So the next question: What made you want to play karate in Masinko? All right. So this is a good question. Um, what made me want to play karate in Masinko is actually. Uh, these deacons that I saw and that I met in Atlanta. Um, shout out to Simon and Yalo, Sisai, Thomas. They actually, they're really nice to me. So the, I went on a, uh, a Gubai, actually. I think it was around August. I'm not sure what year it was, but um, they invited my, my dad and I to the Gabriel Church in Atlanta. And so we served there for like, a couple of days, I think, for English Gaddasi, and then um, they were playing. I saw Simon playing ma, uh, the Karar, and then Yalo playing the Masinko. They were, it was actually amazing when they played. It just added on to the mesmer, if, if that makes sense. Like it just made it sound so much better, and um, and it really just got to me. So then I was like, I really need to, I really need to get a hold of an instrument. So yeah, so those that's how I started. When did you start learning? So, I, Masinko I started in 2019. Uh, that took, it took me at least, I want to say a week to figure out how to play the Tizita scale. Um, and then I started playing Karar this year, I believe, in February 2022. Yeah, year 2020. Yeah, so it was this year in February I started playing the Karar. Um, and then, so the next question, it leads into this one. How did you learn? So the Masinko, I had to learn the Masinko by ear. 
um at first i would um try to play a mesmer so i played uh i was trying to play a mesmer by ear so i think it was you at disawa that was my first mesmer a little short mesmer you at disawa um I tried to play that by ear on Masinko, and then after I learned how to play it, after I figured out which notes to press, it was a Tizita scale. Um, everything, when it came to the scales and all, I had to learn by ear. Um, there are YouTube videos that I had to look up uh, that I used for reference, but I never really relied on them because um, they, were all, <laughs> they were all Amari tutorials and I never understood it. So I would just go by ear. Um, most of the time I would just listen to it, um, and then just tune, try to figure it out on the Masenko itself. Because the Masenko is like a slider, it's, um, it's a little bit more difficult to figure out how to play it. And you have to be precise about where you have to place your fingers. So it was a little bit more challenging for me to play, um, Masenko for a lot of the Mesmores when I started. But that's why I took a break. So that's why there's... There's a huge gap in years when I learned um, Masinko and Karar. So from 2019 to 2022, that's the uh, that's the gap. 2019 I learned Masinko, and then 2022 I learned how to, how to play the Karar. But um, it took yeah, it just took about a week for me to play the uh, Tizita scale consistently on the Masinko, and then after that, I just slowly build up to learning all the other scales. I think the next scale I learned was Ambasan. Um, that took another week. Bati took three days, it didn't take that long. Um, and then I, I didn't learn Anchi Hoi till <laughs> I didn't know that existed, that skill existed till like a year and a half later. So, yeah. And then when it came to the Karar, because I was already familiar with all the scales on the Masinko, and then the Karar was just, um, it's basically just like a Masinko, but just with six different strings. So, um, when you're pressing on the Masinko, you're using your fingers. It's the same with the, same with the, um, Karar. Instead of pressing down on the string, you're just plucking. And so I just found that, I found it easier too. Um, but the Karar only took, I'd say, three days for me to learn. Um, and then I'll, I'll explain a little bit more. This next one says, do you play any other instruments? So I actually do play other instruments. Um, in high school, I played the alto saxophone. Um, but I, I also played the guitar and ukulele, which is why I probably learned the karate in three days. It didn't take me that long to figure it out. Um, because I'm already so used to plucking with my fingers on the guitar and the ukulele, I was able to easily learn how to get play the karate muscle memory was already there for me um but the only difficult part was i was able i have to play guitar with my right hand uh let's see with the guitar you would play with your right hand right so this would be the one plucking and then your left hand is the one pressing the thing uh pressing the strings down um but uh, I was able, because my left hand was the one pressing the strings down, I was able to develop calluses on the tips of my fingers. So, I mean, it did help a little bit, um, learning, knowing how to play the guitar, but um, in terms of like notes and stuff, I was also self-taught on the guitar. Next one says, do you know how to play the Begana? So I actually, I don't know how to play the Begana at all, actually. It does look confusing to me because there's more strings, but I'm pretty sure you only play, um five out of the ten strings that are there or however many strings the beginner has i don't really know <laughs> um but yeah i definitely do want to play it i just i don't have space for the beginner in my room at all um and i'm not sure how would I, how i would get a hold of one um if i do end up going to ethiopia i'll definitely get it from there getting the beginner shipped to canada is definitely going to be expensive um because I'm pretty sure they charge you by a kilogram or something, and the big one has a huge instrument. And I don't want to risk um, it getting damaged along the way, so um, I think it would be better if I just like went to Ethiopia. Uh, if I went to Ethiopia to visit, I'd probably buy one there and then just like use it as a carry on on the way back. <laughs> All right. So the next one says, "How did you become Ethiopian Orthodox?" So 
Uh, I was actually born into the church. It was my my dad actually started off. Um, he actually was Catholic, but then he converted later on to uh, Ethiopian Orthodox. Um, it's a long story, so I could probably make another video with him. Um, telling his story, his side, and how he became Ethiopian Orthodox. I've heard the story many times, it's just very, very long. Um, we'll probably cover that in another video. But, I was born into the church, so the only thing I really knew was Ethiopian Orthodox. The tradition, the culture, um, and being born Ethiopian Orthodox, it just, it's part of who I am now, so... Like, I have to go, I come to church every Sunday, and whenever I miss a Sunday, I don't feel right, if that makes sense. It's like my, it's like going to church every Sunday is like my weekly coffee. Like, if I don't do it, if I don't go to church, I'd feel really bad for the rest of the week. Um, it's just, it's just part of who I am. And I'm probably no different from my viewers watching, uh, other than, besides my background and my race, uh, I try my best to fit in but i can't help the number of people staring at me um people are always staring because i look different um but that's it's normal and mainly in the mainly in the ethiopian community i do stand out <laughs> um a lot of foreigners stand out because they're different um but it's all right. At this point, I just got used to it. People, I go to different churches and people just stare at me. <laughs> it's the same stare. And then they, because I'm a deacon, they see me walk into inside the mech. They're like, oh, wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, next question says, do you teach classes? Um, I actually, uh, this year for Filsata, I did teach classes during the two week fast. Um, but I don't I don't teach classes as of now um uh, i'm not sure if i'm going to that's why i'm posting that's why i'm posting all these video tutorials on tiktok and stuff i'm not sure if i'm able to commit to a class every sunday or something whenever i go to church and um because i'm still a student it's hard for me to make the time to teach classes because of my studies so yeah as of now i don't teach classes what is your setup slash audio system uh okay so I could show you my setup. Let me just switch over to my phone and then uh, I'll show you how I set up my karar and stuff like that. Yeah, so this is my entire setup. Um, sorry, you guys are looking at the floor, but um, I'll show you guys what I did to the karar. So with my karar, there's just, um, I just added like tape there to dampen the uh, buzzing sound. Cause when I got my karar, it would just buzz a lot. Um, and also it doesn't matter where you put the bridge it just uh it's up to your preference whatever sounds the best you have to kind of experiment with it you can kind of see the um sorry let me just put this on the my bed you see the pen marks you can see the pen marks where the uh where the bridge um went when it was made where you put it but um i decided to put it all the way down here because it sounded better down here uh in my opinion and um so what i have here i bought a vibration pickup and so I just installed it here. I just put, I just have it taped up there, right? Just for the buzzing. And then I have it wired all the way up. I just grabbed some Velcro, uh, Velcro the extra wire, zip tied the uh, end here, put a little bit of tape, but that's the, uh, that's the jack that you put the, uh, you connect your um, Octaver into. Um, but I'll show you guys that now. So it's a quarter inch uh, female jack so i'll show you what that looks like what the connecting part is so this is the uh connector that i have it's male but this is the quarter jack i was talking about so that goes that goes into here right you can just put that in here and then it would work um so this is when i have a wired system i would normally so i have my octaver here uh that's what it looks like for you guys wondering my octaver is a pitchfork electro harmonics um there's just, uh, this is just for what effect you want, and then this is how much, uh, how much of the effect you want it to mix. So, generally, I would just plug this into power, right? It has a power cable, you need to power it, obviously. Plug that in, light turns on. And so, there's an input, 
any output. So that's pretty, it's pretty self-explanatory. Your cutout is gonna go in the input because you're putting it into the system. And then it's gonna come out this way and wherever the other end is, right? So in my case, I have another mail jack, so it's gonna go out, right? And then it's gonna go to wherever you want it to. So it's gonna go in the input of your speaker. It's gonna go in here. And then when you turn it on, you should be able to hear it. So I have this little speaker at home for when I wanna play for myself. Um, but in the case that you want to play in like your church's system, you need to take the, um, whatever end of the wire is that's coming out, you need to figure out a adapter for it. So that's why I have this cable at my church. If you look at the audio system, depending on, um, the mixer that they have, um, I have this end. It's an XLR cable end. This is, I think this is a male end. So what happens is I plug the male side to the female part. So this goes in like this, right? And so now I just plug this into the church's system and to the speaker or whatever, and then it, they should be able to hear me play. So back to the part where it goes in, right? I recently upgraded to wireless transmitters, so I don't have to use um, the wire anymore because there's so much wire. I'm limited to how far I could be from the box, but because I have wireless now, I could just walk around with it. So what happens is, um, so what happens is I have my transmitter, right? So this goes into the car. I can probably show you how to install it right now. You can probably hear it if anything. So this goes into the car. It's also a male jack, right? So that would fit in here, right? So that's in there. And then this would go right because these two devices talk to one another you put this in right it's going to go in through the octaver right it's going to speak to this and then it's going to come out to the wire and then into the church's audio system so i could show you on the speaker here turn this on plug this in and so you won't hear anything yet because i didn't turn these guys on so that turns on and then this turns on, I'm gonna turn this on. Right, and now they're connected. So now when I go to play, right, you can probably hear it already. Let's see if I can. All right, so that's how that works. Hopefully I didn't confuse anybody. Um, but just the only, um, the only thing I'd say you have to figure out is how you're gonna get your Karar, how it's gonna, how you're gonna get the sound from your octaver to the church's system. The only thing that would be um, complicating um, that you'd actually have to figure out yourself is how you're gonna connect this entire system, how you're gonna connect the karar to your church's audio system or a speaker or whatever. Um, you could, you could do it this way too. You can have this directly go into the speaker. Right, and you won't you won't have the effects from the octaver, um, but you'll have you'll have some amplification. You could get the volume from the karara to a speaker. But yeah, so that's how that works. That's how I connect to my system. Um, hopefully that helps. That answers a lot. And for those who don't know what the octaver is, um, it just changes the uh, it adds an effect to the karara and adds. Um, it adds more bass, it changes the pitch to it. So if I, well, let me just plug it back in. All right, so it just adds more, adds bass, give me a second. All right, so this is what it sounds like. All right, so this is the effect. You can hear like the bass, and when I turn it off, let me just turn it off, All right? All right, so, now the effect is gone. I'm going to turn it back on. Right? So that's how that works. I hope that wasn't confusing. Um, but I, I also hope that it helped. Um, some of you guys understand how I um, plug in my car into the system. Into the audio system. But uh, yeah, so that's how that works. Next question. Where did you get your Krar or Masenko? I actually got them from Ethiopia. Um, I reached out to 
uh, Seaside Bagana and um, credit to uh, shout out to Maheder. Um, he helped me get a hold of one. He actually was the one who helped me um, get it over here to Canada. Um, but yeah, so I started. That's where I got my kara from. I got it from Seaside Bagana in Addis. Um, I'm pretty sure it's like um, I'm not sure exactly where. I think it's like Arat Kilo or something. Um, but yeah, Sisa Begana, it's a, it's a great, uh, school from what I've heard, uh, to learn, um, because they're in Ethiopia, I can't, I can't really, uh, <laughs> attend their classes, um, I think they do have online classes as well. Do your fingers hurt when you play Karara? Um, so my fingers actually don't hurt anymore when I play Karara, I, it used to, it used to hurt, um, actually no, it hurt a lot when I was playing guitar. When I play guitar, um, because I'd have to press down on the strings really hard to actually get a decent sound, um, I would, my fingers would get sore just a little bit, but after playing Karada, I was able to, it, my fingers never hurt anymore. Um, for beginners, I'd say, when you first start playing Karada, your fingers will definitely, um, hurt for a bit, but, um, it's okay because over time you'll develop uh, calluses and your fingertips just become like a little tougher so you won't be able to feel you won't be able to feel that pain anymore um, it just goes away over time what's the most effective way to learn how to finger pick on the karar so what I did on the karar I've, I could probably show you guys for me how I learned so most of you probably already know um, but I only play with my four fingers. I don't use my pinky. Um, I did train myself how to learn how to play with my pinky, but I don't play it. I don't use it as often. But um, what I did when I started was um, playing each string and alternating between uh, the fingers. So if I struggled with uh, these two, so at the time I struggled with the middle finger and the ring finger moving them. So what I did was just keep repeating um, or keep alternating my fingers playing each string until I got used to it my thumb I would do this and then I'd do this with my finger as well finger middle finger and then I struggled with these two fingers uh, my middle finger and my ring finger so what I did most of the time was um, alternate and I just kept playing this way and then I just got used to it over time. Um, and yeah, so actually a little technique that I learned um, when I was teaching myself was that because I don't, I, I didn't know how to use my pinky at the time, I never played like this, all right? Uh, there was an extra string. So the second string never had a, an assigned finger, I guess you could say. Um, so my thumb was able to play, uh, I trained my thumb to play both strings, but sometimes I would use my finger to play the second string. I'll use my finger to play the second string. The technique that I learned is that, I call it the finger drag. Um, I just take my finger and then I just, I drag it across to hit the second string. So, so it's just, I'm just dragging my finger down to hit the second string, right? So when I have to go up, I use, I also sometimes use my finger to drag from this string, from the fourth string, all the way down to the second string, so. Alright, so next question. Do you play any other types of songs? Um, I only intend on playing Mesmores with my Karar and Masinko. I don't plan on playing any other type of song, um, or any other type of genre, I guess you could say. Do you write numbers for Mesmores, then play? So this is a really good question. I get this asked a lot. Um, when I started playing Karar, I would, t I tend to look at my fingers and try to number them, but it depends on how you learn, but I feel like over time in the long run, it's easier to not rely on numbers. I guess what I'm trying to say is try to learn by ear and also by feel. So I've 
developed this ability to just listen to a song and then figure out how to play it and not look at my fingers at all so when it comes to uh, i could probably give an example now that it's all plugged in all right so what i learned to do is um not look at i trained myself not to look at my fingers when i play um sometimes i do have to but um most of the time it's just feel uh so learning by ear definitely helps uh, so like when it comes to uh playing the mesmer let's say uh selassie right so i would know it start it start with this one so because i train how to play um without looking at my fingers or num or using numbers i'm able to just play a mesmer without having to really think about which which finger comes next or what um or how should i play this part um it just comes naturally now um which i find it, it's it's really easy for me that way um so for instance so if i were to play uh i'm able to just play it right i just if i know how it sounds like i'm able to just play it on the car without worrying about oh what number does it start with or um how do i play the verse so for instance so let me just try to play the mesmer the mesmer um by memory um because i've listened to it so many times i just know how it goes how it sounds um even when it comes to the verses so i could probably play a verse here too mesmer um off memory um and it doesn't take that long for me to usually learn how to play new ones if i know the general um melody i'm able to just reciprocate that and transfer it over to uh my fingers and then to the kara itself um but to start off i'd say try your best to just get a feel for the kara and don't don't rely on looking on your fingers because not all the time when you play, right? You're not always going to be looking at your karar playing like this because it kind of looks kind of looks weird when you're just staring at your karar all the time, right? If you look at um, most of the... If you watch videos on other people playing karar, they don't look at their fingers. They're just they're just playing because they actually understand... They have that muscle memory and they have the feel, um, the feel for the karar. They're able to just know which finger plucks what string and how to how to play it that sounds so congested oh my gosh all right so on the next question who do you look up to and who inspires you to play so for me actually it, it's probably obvious based on the mesmers that i've been playing um but it's it would be gabriel johannes and uh toedros those two are definitely my favorite um my favorite zamaris to learn mesmers from and the next question here says, have you been to Ethiopia? Actually, I have never been to Ethiopia once. I really want to go, um, at least for vacation, just to, to stay there for a while. Probably, I'd say give it a good, good, good couple weeks, maybe a month just to stay there. Stay there for vacation for a bit. I think it would be really nice to just stay there. Um, and then learn as much as I can. Um, 
but definitely the plan is because I go to school for aircraft maintenance. Um, I definitely want to get some experience here in Canada, uh, working on airplanes, and then later on in the future, God willingly, uh, I go, I go over to Ethiopia and I start um, working for Ethiopia Airlines. That's that's uh, that's definitely a, a path for me to take. Um, but as of now, I don't really know the future. So. Um, but I definitely do want to visit Ethiopia. I still have to get a big enough from there. So um, I want to try out the food. I want to experience everything there. Uh, it'd definitely be a good place to visit for me. All right. So that concludes this video. Uh, I hope I answered most of the questions that I get common that I get asked uh, a lot. But um, if you guys have any more questions, I could definitely do another one of these uh, Q&A videos. Uh, just leave them down in the comments. If you guys have any uh, Mesmo requests, um, I could definitely, uh, do a tutorial for that Mesmer on this channel, which is probably, actually, yeah, it's, that's a pretty good idea. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I could do, I'll take song requests, but, um, when I have time, I'll definitely make another video. Um, just leave down in the comments your thoughts, um, leave down some Mesmers for me to learn to play. Um, and yeah, thank you guys so much for everything. Thank you.